Let's go on. Business intelligence part number four, dealing with the organizational memory. Um, we now uh, will, in this part, talk about the knowledge repositories. Uh, so far, we have talked about a lot of lots of structured knowledge. Knowledge repositories already deal with um, very often unstructured knowledge and information, um, and uh, that also needs to be handled. It also needs to be integrated in the data structure in order to be to build business intelligence solution solutions. Uh, but before we go into this, we quickly recap what we just talked about. Um, before that, we talked about, uh, in, in part three, we talked about the enterprise architecture and how this architecture is relevant, uh, basically uniting the technology aspects of a company with the business aspects of the company. Um, and uh, we, we, we said how the you know, architecture, enterprise architecture handles standardization and data integration. All these different aspects basically define um, what type of you know, enterprise model you are dealing with, whether you, you know, more follow a so-called um, replication model that what, what, what basically McDonald's is doing, or following a unification model that, uh, for example, that the airlines is following. In addition to this you know, unification and um, uh, replication model, we also uh, talked about the diversification model and the coordination model. So all these four models basically define um, show whether you have high data integration or low data integration, whether you have high standardization or low standardization. Um, the models developed by the um, MIT School of Sloan School of Management um, and are very well uh, used in, in, in industry out there. Uh, and then finally, we used you know, Delta Airlines as an example of a unification model. And I showed you one of these you know, architectural diagrams that show the enterprise architecture and that show uh, all the different aspects that, that, that are relevant uh, to basically define the enterprise architecture. Now, uh, in this last part for you know, dealing with the organization memory, we'll talk about the knowledge repositories. What are knowledge repositories? Basically, um, technologies that support the capture of unstructured information and knowledge. Unstructured information, knowledge, documents, document management systems, but also things like audio and video files. This is all stuff that is not necessarily in a database, that is stored somewhere else, but it is relevant uh, for future BI processes. Uh, basically, digital content management systems. Um, for knowledge management, for knowledge repositories to be effective, we need two things. We need knowledge owners and we need knowledge seekers. The knowledge owners seek to share their knowledge. The knowledge owners, they really want to share their knowledge. They have certain knowledge, they want to share it. They're able to decide when to share and define the conditions how to share their knowledge. Um, and they feel res reciprocity or receive a fair exchange for sharing. So they basically either feel, okay, I'm happy to share because I feel good when I'm able to share knowledge, or I get something back, I mean, depending on, on the type of knowledge sharing. Um, but somehow we need somebody that you know, is able and that is wanting to share knowledge. Otherwise, we cannot generate knowledge. Um, on the other hand, you know, to have a, you know, a proper knowledge management exchange and, knowledge and proper use of knowledge, um, basically knowledge repositories, uh, you also need a knowledge seeker, somebody who wants to learn something, somebody who needs the knowledge. Um, knowledge seekers are able to explore, search, and rank. So basically we try to explore, search, and rank knowledge or information. Uh, knowledge seekers are provided uh, with sufficient contextual information that's also relevant. If you have the contextual information, you can decide whether a certain you know, piece of information is relevant or not. The contextual information is really important. Um, one example you probably all know uh, as a knowledge uh, repository is a so-called document management system. Uh, you probably have already worked with document management systems. Uh, the core is usually uh, an electronic storage system, electronic storage medium, uh, usually somewhere online, that uh, affords multiple access through databases, through um, uh, web applications, through the browser, through um, kind of installed systems on your computer. It adds support for classification, that's an important aspect, and organization of unstructured information. So we can classify uh, the uh, information we put there, and we can some, so, somehow organize structured information. I can put you know, folders, I can put links, I can put labels, and that's the way. If I, if I deal with unstructured information, if you think about Wikipedia, for example, Wikipedia is you know, a huge you know, pool of unstructured information. It's text, it's plain text. But there's ways to structure it. There's ways you know, to put keywords, there's ways to put folders, there's ways to put uh, links. That's how you structure it. So you need, this is a, a crucial um, aspect of uh, knowledge um, document management systems or knowledge repositories. Uh, it aggregates relevant information through a common, typically web-based uh, interface, sometimes referred to, uh, to as portal. 
portal, you've probably already heard the term portal, is usually you know, the, ang the access to a knowledge repository, the so called portal. And it uses standardized hierarchical structures or classification taxonomies uh, in order to basically organize the data that is in there, uh, taxonomies or, or, or structures. Um, and through using them, it increases communication, allowing sharing of organizational knowledge, allowing the creation and sharing of uh, organizational knowledge. Um, because the more people use it, the more goes in there. Um, people uh, very often become, f become from knowledge seekers to knowledge producers, to knowledge sharers. Because uh, well, they use, they, they find that it's very cool uh, to use that. They, they basically can answer, I mean, you can answer questions, um, uh, can answer your specific question, but you know things. And you, by you know, using the system, you very often end up being an active participant, not only a passive, not only a consumer, becoming somebody who actually adds to the system. And that's a kind of good, it's a good sign to define the maturity of the system, whether you know, the knowledge repository, the knowledge management system, the document system uh, that you use is actually <coughs> worthwhile, is actually work, working. Um, there are different types of knowledge repositories. Um, the document management system was, is probably the most known. Uh, we have things like incident report databases that basically disseminate information related to incidents or mail functions. It's like, you can think of it a bit like a kind of a database of log files. You know, something happens, uh, that's also some sort of you know, knowledge repository. We have alert system. So an alert system that alerts you about some negative or positive experience some incident, something happens. An alert system could be um, a news ticker that you have on your phone that you know, gives you all the, new, uh, the news to a certain domain, to a certain subject you, assi you sign up for. Be an alert system. Best practice databases are very common in uh, organizations. Um, when they deal, you know, if you think about um, uh, customer support, customer problems, there's usually best, best practice databases involved how to solve certain problems. Um, provide information about best practice cases. Uh, lessons learned systems, very similar to best practice, provide positive and negative lessons. So what, do I ha what have I learned? Not only the, what's the best practice, how to solve something, but what have I learned uh, from doing something? That can help employees who find themselves in similar situations. Um, lessons learned systems came actually originally from all these consulting industries, because consulting, as a consultant, you basically sell your knowledge. And you have to, at the end of the day, you sell your experience. That's your product. Um, and so consulting companies to build up more knowledge, not only positive, but also negative, to build up some sort of lessons learned. They came up with these with this lessons learned databases, where a new consultant could just go there and say, well, what have others learned from um, a certain situation? And what can uh, therefore be consulted to this new company? Um, enterprise locator systems is another thing. Uh, help finding experts that you know, are experts in a specific field. We have, we sometimes also call this uh, organization-wide so-called yellow pages. That's kind of a very cheap knowledge management systems, system that basically uh, goes ahead and, 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 and gives you, you know, an idea uh, who might have uh, the information you are looking for. Um, when you compare knowledge uh, repository system, systems, you basically compare them to different things. One aspect you can, uh, one you know, characteristic is the content origin. Where does the content come from? Who is providing the content? In Wikipedia, who is providing the content? We all are providing the content, basically. Uh, you know, the community is providing content, and therefore the community assures the quality. So content origin is very much linked to quality. Can I trust this content or not? Application, application, does it describe an entire process? or only a task or a decision. So what is actually, what can I do with the information that is stored in there? What can I do with the knowledge that is stored in there? Results, does it describe failures or only successes or both? Um, always depends. Orientation, does it support the organization or the whole industry? So is it something that is only for me or something for the whole industry? Is it something that can, can apply to other industries? Um, I have just listed here the uh, couple of systems we mentioned so far, incident, reports, alerts, lessons learned system, best practice databases, and enterprise locator systems. And you know, for all of them, you basically see whether they describe failures, whether they describe successes, whether, what kind of orientation they have. And so you can basically compare uh, knowledge repositories. You can compare different knowledge management systems. I use the, the term knowledge management here maybe a bit too loosely or maybe a bit too, you know, too much. Um, it is, uh, we haven't really talked about knowledge management, and it's not really part of this class to talk about knowledge management. Um, but whenever you talk about knowledge, uh, remember when we talk about knowledge in knowledge repositories, we usually talk about unstructured data. We're not talking about something that is in a database. 
um, yes, we have these incident reports and we have these lessons learned systems that are essentially databases. Um, but usually the data stored in there, it's, it's unstructured. It, it's natural language data. It's something that you somehow need to mine, you somehow need to structure, you somehow need to extract. Um, and uh, you should also be aware that 80% of the data you're dealing with in an organization will be like this. Uh, so that is a very relevant aspect of business intelligence and uh, dealing with data. Um, finally, um, before the end, uh, we have a couple of you know, knowledge sharing uh, system vendors. I mean, what, what are the vendors? What are the companies that would sell you solutions like this? Um, we have, again, you know, proprietary uh, examples like Microsoft, like uh, um, Oracle, like uh, other companies, but also OpenText or EMC that basically have their own knowledge management <coughs> repository or knowledge repository. Uh, I pro I pre probably the most, you know, the one that you're most familiar with is Microsoft SharePoint. Uh, which is basically a document management system. It's basically a knowledge management or um, knowledge repository system, depending on how you set it up. I mean, it is, it is a very powerful tool. Uh, can do a lot of things, um, and it's quite famous and becomes more and more used, actually, in industry, too. Uh, we also have open source examples. I, o I also want to you know, also provide you with open source examples because I believe uh, you should know the other side, too. Uh, not everything is proprietary. Um, uh, we have OpenCAM, uh, we have Alfresco, uh, and we have Knowledge Tree, just to mention a couple of examples uh, for systems that help you actually just store unstructured information, unstructured knowledge. Okay, good. That was a very quick one on, on knowledge repositories. Uh, we talked about the technologies that you know, basically captured unstructured information uh, and knowledge. It's very important because, as I said, I, about 80% of the knowledge and of the information you have in your company is unstructured does not reside in databases. It's not something um, that you can just query with a structured query language, language like SQL or any other query language. And <clears throat> we compared solutions with respect to content origin, to application, to results, and orientation. Um, and then said, OK, well, what kind of systems do we have? And what, what, how do they you know, differentiate? Good. That was um, the quick recap for part number four. Maybe at the very end, uh, let's recap and let's talk about you know, the entire lesson, the entire class uh, on uh, the organizational memory. Uh, you learned the technologies that enable the creation of the organizational memory, uh, the aggregate uh, of all the com corporate structure and information that is used for BI. We discussed the ERP systems and the critical success factors for their implementation. Um, we also talked about data warehouses. Uh, the reasons why organizations implement them, the two most popular modeling, modeling methodologies <coughs> used to implement them, and the challenges around deploying data warehouses. So data warehouses is a very modern technology. Only in like 2005, around 2005, they started really implementing data warehouses. Um, and uh, there are still uh, lots of challenges involved in building one. However, uh, it's probably one of the, you know, the, the biggest and the, the first things that people, uh, the organizations would use in order to build up their BI strategy, they would start with a, you know, creating a data warehouse because it supports uh, all the BI processes that lie on top of them. Um, and finally, we have heard how to define the operating model for the enterprises, uh, like the, uh, basically the enterprise architecture, and the corresponding enterprise architecture and what technologies are used for storing unstructured uh, information and knowledge. Basically, we talked about knowledge repositories at the very end. Okay, here um, I want to thank you for your attention. You have a couple of additional references here and here, just in case you're interested. Um, and uh, from then, from here on, we go on with our next topic, which will be the um, basically information integration, the second uh, capability of business intelligence. Thank you very much. <laughs>